Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the last three episodes of the 2022 Netflix documentary titled Harry and Meghan? This would be episodes four, five, and six. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I will offer a brief summary of the first three episodes, as I have a separate video dedicated to those episodes. I will move to a complete summary of the last three episodes, then offer my analysis. The first three episodes of the documentary were about how Harry and Meghan are great people. It reviewed their experiences growing up and talked about how everybody should love them because they are incredibly caring and special. Their love story is dazzling and magnificent, but their lives were not perfect. They had to contend with the nefarious conspiracy between the British royal family and the media. It was a struggle for survival. Episode 3 ends just before the couple gets married in May of 2018. Now moving to a summary of episodes 4 through 6. Episode 4 starts with the wedding of Harry and Meghan. The documentary spends a lot of time on the wedding, showing how it was epic and glamorous. Meghan made it seem as though she really didn't need a big wedding. She would have been happy with something simple. She described how people were lining the streets to see her. She did not realize how popular she was. Charles, who is now King Charles III, walked her down the aisle. All the attention was a bit overwhelming, but when Harry and Meghan were actually getting married, Meghan was focused only on Harry. It was just the two of them. They could shut the world out and enjoy their special moment. They found each other in the chaos. Overall, the wedding was first class and elegant. The reception was unbelievable as well. In the end, love won. After the wedding, the couple lived on the grounds of Kensington Palace. Their accommodations were very small. The ceiling was unreasonably low. During Meghan's first official engagement with the Queen, she had a lot of respect for the Queen and made the Queen laugh. Meghan then talked about how she helped the survivors of the Grenfell fire, which occurred in 2017. She even performed manual labor in her volunteer work, like when she washed five kilograms of rice. Harry and Meghan continued with their engagements. When they were on a tour of Australia, they spoke to a different generation with whom the monarchy had not connected. It was magical. Meghan became pregnant, but continued to tour with her husband. The couple also continued to have incredible success connecting with people. They connected with people in a way that no one could imagine. They elicited sensational enthusiasm. Their success was so profound, other members of the British royal family were becoming envious. Meghan was more popular than the Queen. Harry and Meghan were more popular than Prince William and his wife Kate Middleton. Their unprecedented popularity undermined the authority of the monarchy. The couple could have destroyed the entire British royal family with their astounding level of likability. Members of the royal family devised a plan to derail the extraordinary adoration the couple received from the public. They conspired with the media to criticize Meghan for doing the same things that Kate Middleton was doing. It was tragically unfair. Harry and Meghan believed that racism may have played a part in addition to their universal acclaim. Meghan struggled with her mental health, but she was not allowed to receive treatment. During Christmas of 2018, the couple stayed in Vancouver, Canada, as the paparazzi hounded them. It was a dark time. The Queen permitted the couple to move into Frogmore Cottage, a residence which presumably had a higher ceiling. Considering that the couple had their heads in the clouds, I'm not sure that any ceiling height would have been adequate. Meghan had a son named Archie, in May of 2019. Meghan and Harry were criticized for not following procedure when introducing their son to the media. Four months later, the couple went on a tour of South Africa. They were well received there. There was joy in the streets. When Meghan was being interviewed by a reporter for an official documentary, she implied that she may not be okay. It was a moment of vulnerability which made her a hero in the eyes of the public, but drew anger. From the monarchy. The documentary then moved to the topic of Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, 
and how he gave statements to the media for money. Megan sent him a letter, which was leaked to the press. She wanted to sue the media outlet that released it, but the monarchy did not want her to. She eventually filed a lawsuit anyway. Harry and Meghan were frustrated by all the negative media attention. They started developing a plan to move away from Britain. They discussed moving to New Zealand, South Africa, or Canada, but still continuing to represent the Queen. Their plans were derailed because they were leaked to the media. Thereby, the media saved either New Zealand, South Africa, or Canada. Harry attended a secret meeting with the royal family, to which Meghan was not invited. According to Harry, his brother William screamed at him, his father Charles lied, and his grandmother, the Queen, sat by and did nothing. In January 2020, Harry and Meghan stepped back from their duties as senior members of the royal family. This event was called Megxit by the media. As the couple was getting ready to leave Britain, Meghan was worried what people would think of her, but then she discovered that the people in Britain were deeply devoted to her. At least, this is what Meghan believed. In March of 2020, the couple moved to Vancouver, Canada. The royal family told them that their security would be removed in a few weeks. At the same time, the COVID-19 pandemic started. Harry and Meghan fled to California and lived in a $13 million mansion owned by the wealthy producer, Tyler Perry. In July 2020, the couple moved into their own place, a $14 million mansion in Montecito, California. The next month, Megan had a miscarriage, which she attributed to the stress caused by the negative media attention. Harry and Megan started a charity devoted to topics like the environment, gender equality, and mental health. In reality, Harry had been working on life coaching, not mental health. Comparing mental health counseling to life coaching is like saying you're going on a trip to the moon when you're really climbing three flights of stairs. In March 2021, the couple interviewed with Oprah Winfrey. When the interview was announced, the palace opened an investigation into Megan over bullying allegations. She had been accused of bullying staff members. The couple claimed this was retaliation for the interview with Oprah. In April of that year, Harry's grandfather, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, died. In June 2021, Megan gave birth to a girl named Lilibet. The documentary ends after revealing how Harry sometimes misses his family, but he knows he is where he belongs. The couple has a life of leisure, and they made it to the other side. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts in a few areas that stood out to me in the documentary. Item number one, the documentary is completely biased toward Harry and Meghan. It is essentially an advertising campaign for them. I don't recall a single person who was interviewed in the documentary who was critical of the quasi-royal couple. The documentary was essentially six episodes of the couple whining about how they were victimized, misunderstood, and discriminated against. The couple was mad because Meghan was not protected by the monarchy. She was told to respond to the media attacks by saying no comment. I think the real attack in the story is that very request. Asking Megan to respond no comment is denying her one activity that she likes more than anything else. Complaining. Item number two. The documentary worked hard to convince viewers that the public actually likes Meghan Markle. The only people who dislike her are the media and their conspirators, the royal family. The documentary offered limited evidence to support this theory. For example, there was a discussion about how most of the negativity on Twitter was caused by just a few accounts. Megan talked about a few individuals who thought she was a great person, like her friends, a woman she volunteered with, and her nanny. It's like Megan was so desperate to prove that she was admired, she had the producers of the documentary contact everyone she knew so they could participate in promoting her. Item number three, Harry and Meghan blamed racism for the negative attention that was paid to Meghan. But they also introduced another theory. Meghan was too popular for her own good. She had captured the hearts and minds of the public and became the center of attention. She was a rock star. She was the most famous and adored person in the world. Nobody had ever seen someone so popular and admired. This is an interesting tactic by the couple. It's a way to counter the story that Megan was somehow 
deficient. Not only did they deny that narrative, they took their defense a step further and suggested that Megan was really too good at her job. Item number four, Harry and Meghan tried to convince the audience that they were gaslighted by the British royal family. The couple was really fantastic, but the monarchy kept telling them that they were awful. This is highlighted in one bizarre scene of the documentary, where Harry and Meghan are going through some type of guided meditation. An instructor can be heard on the phone assuring them with these words, what's transpiring is an illusion when you try to prove that you're good and you're not the person they say you are, you're taking the bait and feeding the beast. Your work is not to prove your goodness. You know who you are. Megan was crying in response to these words. There is this sense that Harry and Megan cannot rationally process criticism. If someone tells them that they're wrong, they instantly take the position that they're being victimized. To the couple, all criticism is gaslighting. Every negative statement that has ever been made about them is a lie. The couple has surrounded themselves with people who tell them how great they are and how everyone else is wrong and terrible. The couple doesn't want advice. They want validation. Item number five. The couple mentioned how Megan was excluded from a secret meeting with senior members of the royal family. This is the one that occurred just before Megxit. The couple tried to make it seem as though Megan was unfairly excluded but something else occurred to me. What if those senior members excluded Megan for a reason unrelated to fairness? For example, they just didn't want to listen to her complain anymore. Maybe they were just protecting themselves from Megan-induced trauma. Item number six. One theme of the documentary is the parallel between Megan and Diana. For example, both of them were exceedingly popular, both were hounded by the paparazzi, and both felt like they were not supported by the royal family. There were even less dramatic parallels made, like how Diana announced that she was pregnant with Harry on Valentine's Day, just like Harry and Meghan did for their second child, or how Diana was planning on moving to California someday. And of course, the couple ultimately moved to California. It's almost like Meghan believes she is the new Diana. She has taken over where Diana left off. She wants people to rally around her and protect her as they should have protected Diana. Nobody can go back and save Diana, but they can still save Megan. Item number seven, Megan introduces a theme of sacrifice in the documentary. She told the story about when she was flying out of Britain and a pilot knelt by her and said, we appreciate everything you did for the country. Megan felt as though this was the first time someone had observed the sacrifice that she made for a country that was not even her own. Later, she collapsed in the arms of a security guard and said, I tried so hard. He responded, I know you did. Everyone knows there is no one less biased than a hired security guard. How else would he have responded? Could he have said, no, I have to agree with the monarchy on this one. You didn't try hard at all. Responding like that would have been his resignation. Of course, he was going to reassure his employer. The theme of sacrifice brings me to my last item, number eight. Harry and Meghan were angry at the monarchy for not protecting Meghan. The couple was also angry because the royal family would not accept their proposal about rewriting their job descriptions. They viewed this denial as a harsh rejection. In addition to these grievances, there is one more important element here, which is mentioned in the documentary. Megan viewed herself as the future of the monarchy. She was biracial, authentic, and fabulous at her job. Therefore, she could connect with people in a way that other members of the royal family could not. Megan was more than special. She was a new hope for the monarchy and for Britain in general. She was a savior, the messiah to the monarchy. Her destiny was to breathe life into an antiquated and dying institution. Their perceived rejection of Megan was like the Pharisees rejecting Jesus Christ. This is how Megan viewed her relationship with the royal family. They didn't just reject a popular duchess. They rejected their own salvation. They failed to recognize a deity in their midst. Megan sacrificed for them. She risked her life with the paparazzi for them. 
She washed a colander of rice for them, yet she was forsaken. For their sins, the royal family will be condemned to the eternal whining of Meghan Markle. Those are my thoughts on the last three episodes of the documentary, Harry and Meghan. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.